Hello, welcome or welcome back. In today's lesson, we will work on the flexibility of the knees, a rather safe lesson. No matter if it's for your own flexibility, your movement goals, or if it's after surgery or injury and you want to get a little bit more movement into your knees. We will start right away and we will start lying on the back. So please come to lie on your back. So our starting position is lying on the back, on your back, rest on your back, maybe with your legs extended and your arms extended, casually resting and arrive on the floor, let yourself sink towards the floor. Take a, a moment, allow yourself a moment and then bring your attention to your left leg and bend your left knee so to stand your left foot on the floor as much as it's possible for you. Can you assume a position where your, the sole of your foot, even the, the berries of your toes, touch the floor? So if you can fully stand your foot, that would be best. That would be our goal, <laughs> maybe, of this lesson, to be able to stand the foot and rest like this. But any approximation will do for the moment. And if it's not too much trouble, if it's not too strenuous, also take a moment in this position with your left foot standing and feel, allow yourself to feel, give yourself permission to notice how you feel. So that might be a greater undertaking. <laughs> to allow yourself to feel how your left foot is standing. Because your left lower leg, your left upper leg, it has a, a weight to it. And this weight is leaning on your foot and on your pelvis, of course, on your hip joint. So that's the actual starting position of this uh, lesson. And our first movement is to slide the foot on the floor in the line, in the direction of your leg, how your leg was resting before approximately. So you're pushing your foot downwards away from your pelvis and, and stop and then pull it up again closer to your pelvis. So your left leg is moving, but your left foot is sliding. Is it a sliding or a gliding or a, a cranking? How would you describe the quality of this movement of sliding with the sole of your foot on the floor and the toes, maybe the toes can touch the floor. What parts of your foot is, what parts are touching the floor? And you slide your left foot further away as far as it can without losing contact with the floor. So the entire sole, the, the berries of your toes and your heel should always be in contact with the floor and then pull it closer to your pelvis and push it down further away. So that's our movement, a sliding, a sliding movement. And maybe there's some angles that are better than others. So you can angle the foot to slide a little bit more towards the outside. So if you, as if your leg is, would be resting more towards the outside, or you can slide the foot more towards the midline, like you would paint a star or little stripes on the floor with sliding <laughs> or painting the floor, drawing little lines on the floor. Very, a very 
relax movement and maybe the direction can vary a little bit. And you can take rests in between if you find a spot. Ah, oh, that's a nice resting spot. Ah, you can allow yourself <laughs> the luxury of a rest. So this is a class, an online class. And in the class, it's part of the class, permission to feel, to sense, to rest. And then continue, continue to slide your foot downwards and back up again. And how much do you have to lift it? What are the mechanics? What is the effort? And what is the connection to your pelvis? So now we need to work on the image. <laughs> is your upper part, your torso, your chest, is it like a block of concrete, of stone or steel? that's not moving at all, or is, are you subtle and is your leg part of all of yourself and does your pelvis maybe move? Is your chest allowed to respond, your breathing allowed to respond to the movement of the leg? So start to focus on this relationship between your leg and your torso. And to help you with that, Let's assume a different position for the right leg. So instead of having the right leg long, like a log, <laughs> like a big tree that is resting on the floor, stand your right foot as well. So both your feet are standing. And you will notice when both feet are standing, what, what do you notice? Do you notice immediately that the pelvis becomes a little bit more free to move? And then continue with the movement of sliding the foot a little bit away and pull it up and feel the difference that the position of your right leg is making in for the movement of your left leg. And you can extend your right leg again like a big log and maybe the difference is not so big or maybe it's a big difference, a marked difference. Or maybe you can rest your bent right leg. So you can bend your right leg and rest it a little bit to the outside, maybe on a, on a pillow and see if that makes a, a difference to the movement of your, of your left foot, the sliding and gliding of your left foot on the floor and the movement of your chest. See if you can start to feel that you can move your chest, uh, the, the torso can extend and bend and side bend, <laughs> the ribs can move. So then take a short rest, we will stay with the left leg, so only move your left knee, except when you really want to work only on one knee. Maybe if your right knee is injured, maybe you want to work more with your right knee, but I would suggest a balance. And I would suggest to start with the left one to see the difference between the left one and the right one, because these movements make a difference. And <laughs> to notice a difference, we need to work with one leg more than the other, so we can observe the, the benefits. Okay, let's continue, then stand your left leg again. And instead of sliding the foot downwards away from the pelvis and drawing it up closer towards your pelvis, move your left foot to the outside. Slide your left foot to the outside and to the midline. <laughs> so maybe this doesn't work so well and you have to walk your foot or crawl your foot. So that's not something we are looking for, we are looking for a sliding movement. And if the <laughs> left foot doesn't slide to the outside as well, what can it be? Why does it not slide so nicely to the outside? So maybe you have to stand your right foot and then the left foot is sliding. Or maybe you have to extend your right leg. How, how can you support the movement of your left foot to the outside and to the middle. Or maybe it had nothing to do with the right foot. Maybe it has something to do with the, with the chest. So 
<laughs> maybe you need to allow your chest to side bend to the left. Maybe you need to allow your left ear to come to your left shoulder. So maybe if you allow a, a side bending, then the left foot has an easier time to come to the outside. What is it? What was the obstacle? And then observe when you slide your left foot to the outside, move your left knee a little bit to the inside. So the left foot goes into opposite direction of the left knee. So when the left knee moves to the outside, the left foot moves to the inside. So try this kind of movement. So don't hold your left knee in, in place, but also let your left knee move a little bit in and out when you slide your left foot in and out. And also take breaks. See uh, if you find a position to stand your left foot that feels particularly nice. So you can rest there and you can just observe the, the pressure on your foot, the freedom you start to get in your left hip joint. So you could take rests with your left foot standing or you could take rests with your left leg resting. And with the right leg, I leave it to you to, to see how you want to hold your right leg, if you want to stand your right foot or have your right leg bent to the outside or the right leg extended downwards like a big long tree. This is also working on the image we have, how we perceive our limbs, what kind of internal representation we have in our mind for our body. And then continue with the sliding of your left foot. So our first movement was to slide the left foot closer to the pelvis and further away. And then we had like little stripes in different directions downwards. And then we had a movement with the left foot to the left and the left knee to the right or the left foot to the right and the left knee to the left. And see where can you reach down there in your lower left quadrant, in which air area can you slide your foot nicely? How, how do you turn your foot? When do you have more weight on your heel, on the outside edge, the inside edge, the, the toes? See how easy it gets. Does it get easier to slide your left foot to the outside and to the inside? How can you perceive your, your chest? Is your chest starting to move more and more? Is your pelvis starting to move more and more together with your left foot? Is the movement somehow connected to your breathing? Do you Hold your breath, do you stop your breathing at some positions of your left foot? Or can your breathing be independent from the movement? And if you have been injured or had, you had surgery and you cannot bend your, your leg so much, just do what is available to you. Do the movements that are available and stay within your comfort zone. So that's different to classical therapy. Don't push yourself beyond your limits. Don't push yourself into the realm of pain, but stay where you're comfortable, where you know yourself, where you feel confident, but use this, use this area. So if you're confident with your sliding your leg, with your knee just a little bit bent, do this, but do it. <laughs> you, you have to. You have to work within your comfort, within your competence. All right, and then take a rest on your.
back, just feel how you how you rest, and then we will see. We will compare, and to compare, we need to roll onto the front side. So come to lie on your front, roll over on your front side, on your belly. And here on the belly, bend your left knee and see how easy or difficult it is to bring your left foot towards your left buttock and then your right foot towards your right buttock and see, see if you can feel a difference in smoothness, in ease, in range of movement. <laughs> Yes, and if you haven't done an exercise like this, then you, you will feel a, a strong difference. A strong improvement of your left knee, of your left leg, towards bending the left knee. Okay, then we will continue. <laughs> Was that a good comparison? Did you feel the difference? Then we will continue on the back, and this time, Stand your right foot. Yes, and feel how it is to to rest your right foot. How your the sole of your right foot is in contact with the floor. How the weight of your knee of your leg is pushing down on your right foot. See how much can you let go of your leg without the leg tipping over or falling over. How you, how much can you? relax and rest in this position. And then start to slide your right foot downwards, away from your right hip joint, a little bit in the direction of your leg, like how your right leg would be resting on the floor, or pull it up, or, or feel in which direction, what is the first direction your, your right foot would take downwards or upwards? How well does it slide or glide downwards and upwards with taking breaks, with minimizing effort, exploring your comfort zone? And then paint lines in different angles downwards, a little bit more towards the right foot a little bit more towards your left foot or the right foot further away from your left foot or also slide your right foot to the outside and see ah okay the right foot to the outside is it easier than the left foot to the outside on the left so you can slide your right foot right and left and how does how does this <laughs> how is this influenced by the position of your left leg so when you stand your left foot does your right foot slide better, easier, lighter? Does it have to crawl less? Can it slide more? <laughs> when you experiment with these three different positions with your left leg, so either the left foot standing or the left leg resting bent to the outside or the left leg like a log, like, or like a standing leg downwards, does this, how does this influence the mechanics of your entire body? How do you imagine, how do you see yourself from the inside resting with your right foot moving and how do you perceive your, your chest side bending and flexing, arching and, and bending and <laughs> moving and all sorts of ways to support your foot from sliding to the outside and inside. And here also move the right knee, observe, did you move your right knee? So when your right foot moves to the outside, your right knee can come to the inside. And if your right foot, foot moves towards your left knee or your left leg, the right knee can fall a little bit to the outside. And see all the places you can reach with your right foot without losing contact with the 
toes, so the, the berries of your right toe, the little fingers, the toes, <laughs> they stay on the floor. Keep your, but don't push your foot to the floor, just rest it, rest and slide. Less and less effort, more and more comfort, ease, elegance. Also with your hands, make sure your hands are relaxed, that you don't <laughs> hold on to the floor <laughs> with your hands, like you're on the Titanic, sinking ship, oh, oh, oh no, but, but <laughs> let yourself be at ease on the floor while you just simply slide your right foot closer to your right hip joint or further away. Or more to the left and more to the right. And at some point, take a rest with your right leg extended. We stay on the back, just take a rest on the back. We assume the legs are evened out now. We work with the right knee and with the left knee. Now to continue the lesson, stand both feet. Both feet are standing and then slide both feet. So in our little system, in the se sequence, we slide the feet first downwards. Yeah, <laughs> slide them together downwards and then draw them up again towards your pelvis. How, so how is that different when you have to slide both feet at the same time? Both feet down, sliding, sliding, and up again. <laughs> so here you might start to really feel the teamwork with your, with your chest, with the middle back, the area in between your shoulder blades, maybe even your neck, how your head is moving, maybe how your eyes, your breathing, everything is connected to the movement, to the sliding, maybe it's a gliding of your, of your feet on the floor downwards and upwards, or to the side, right foot to the outside, left foot to the outside, which means the knees come together, or the feet come together, the knees go apart, or you guessed it, we can, we could make circles. So try to make circles that the feet are moving outwards at the same time and inwards at the same time. And, and here you can feel Maybe if you side bend to the left, the left foot, of course, can come out further to the left. You might have already explored that. Or if you side bend to the right, this might affect the circles of the right foot. So where is the middle of the feet sliding in circles toward each other or downwards, upwards? How, how can we describe the circles with the clockwise circles with the right foot and counterclockwise circles with the left foot or counterclockwise circles with the right foot? Oh, ah, so I discovered a difficulty for me. <laughs> I'm sure you discover a lot for yourself. So I'm happy to read your comments in the comments section. Where are the easy parts for you? Where are the difficult parts for you? Is one foot sliding significantly better than the other? What are your discoveries? So this is a method of asking questions, of course, suggesting movements, but also asking questions. What does make, what makes it easier? What makes it more difficult? How is everything connected? Okay, take a <laughs> short break. Give yourself a short rest on the Back with the legs extended, see how you feel. Ah, this is so nice. Allow yourself to feel good, to feel this microcirculation, this blood flow, this just feeling more and more comfortable. So we are moving, we are feeling, of course, energized through the movement, but at the same time, we feel more relaxed. It's like power learning, super learning, a state of being relaxed and active at the same time. Uh, let's do uh, one last variation on the, on the back. 
stand both feet again and instead of clockwise and counterclockwise circles, move the feet together to the right or to the left. So both feet slide to the left, both feet slide to the right, both feet slide closer to your pelvis or further away. See how much is that movement available to you? If you're doing this video for the first time, is this difficult or easy? Or if you do this video for the second, third, fourth, fifth time, did this become easier, this movement, more available, more enjoyable? And also, do you notice more of the connection? Because when it's easier, you can look at many more details. So, always an element of freestyle, of exploration, I expect you to have your own thinking, not to just follow the movements correctly, but to, to explore it in your own terms. And then take a last rest on the back. Let's compare on the front side again. So to finish this lesson, come to rest on your front side, roll over on your belly. Take a moment to arrive on your belly and then bend your right knee and see, aha, and your left knee, aha, and see how, how, how this improved. And if you're up for it, we can take uh, maybe two or three minutes to work with the legs while resting on the belly. So when your knees are bent, you can move your right foot to the outside or to the inside. But there's nothing to slide for the right foot. It's just moving in the air. Or you do circles with the right foot in the air and feel how that is for your hip joint. For your pelvis, for your chest, for the area in between your shoulder blades. Or you move your left foot left and right. Or do circles with your left foot and see how that rolls your pelvis, how the rolling of your pelvis, because you move your left foot, is affecting your whole chest, your rib cage, your ribs becoming more and more free. Um, take rests in between whenever you need them, or whenever they come to you. When a rest befalls you, when you fall into a rest, then have your knees bent again, your feet somewhere, maybe towards the ceiling, or your feet close to your buttocks. And this time we mimic the movements of the knees. So move the knee, your right knee, a little bit to the outside while you move your right foot to the inside. Or slide your right knee a little bit to the inside, closer to your left knee, and your right foot to the outside. So right knee and right foot in opposite directions. Just similar to how it was when resting on the back, just in the beginning of the lesson. So the right knee moves to the right and to the left, and the right foot in opposite directions. Or do this with the left knee. So slide the left knee in and out. And at the same time, move the left foot in opposite directions of your left knee. So when your left knee slides to the outside, your left foot tilts, turns to the inside. And when your left knee slides to the inside, towards your midline, the left foot tilts moves through space to the outside. And see how that affects your pelvis, your chest, your neck. Turn your head whenever you need to turn it to protect your neck or to give your neck a rest. 
where you can move both knees in a systematic way or in in a wild in a wild explorative dance <laughs> I'm not stopping you I'm not stopping you from making yourself feel good from moving on the floor from enjoying yourself in in movement just go ahead feel free accept the movements as they come to you But then, this is a YouTube video, a video lesson. We need to find ourselves on the back again at some point. Ah, <laughs> to take a last rest, to feel how it is. Maybe to stand your left foot a last time and see how it stands now, how it slides now on your right foot. So this should be a marked improvement now in how you can slide your, your feet. And the best thing will be in standing, the improvement in standing and walking. So let's have a look at this. Let's enjoy the improvements. Let's reap the benefits. Let's in see how it is in standing. So please come up to stand. Yes. <laughs> and allow yourself to find your alignment. Where is the pelvis on top of your feet? Where is your chest, your head? How does everything align up you can think of your head like a balloon and the spine like the string from the balloon hanging down floating and then start to walk and feel oh maybe wow there is an improvement in your knees in your feet in, in how you stand and how you walk It was my pleasure to present you this movement sequence. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed teaching it. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.